If you're new to Angular, you might be a little bit confused on how you take your app from your development environment to a live environment on a different servers that users can actually use. So the process is fairly straightforward, so let's get started. Now, being that this particular course is a part of our free Angular 4 course, I'll assume that you already have a project creating using the Angular command line interface. If not, then we'll use it to create a new one real quickly. And I'll just call this my cool proj. Sweet. Now, because this takes a while, I will pause and I'll come right back. All right, so it just finished installing and I CD'd into the project name. And so one of the tremendous benefits of using the Angular command line interface is the ability to create a production build of your app. And this includes AOT, which is ahead of time compilation, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But in the end, the ultimate goal is to create an app that is as small as possible in file size. So to demonstrate this, let's run the following command in the console within our Angular project that is set up to work with the CLI or command line interface. Simply ng and build. So I, it's not done yet, but I wanted to show you just now it created a new folder. And so let's hop into here. And so here are the files that are associated with the build that we just made. And we'll see these following files right here. We're going to take a look at their file size. So we can see the biggest one here is this vendor.bundle.js, and that's 2.1 megs. Obviously, that's really big. Uh, we also have a 65 uh, KB one here. Polyfills is 171 seven and six. So just note that I may screenshot this so we can compare them. Uh, what we want to do now is run ng build with a hyphen hyphen prod or production flag. And then we're going to compare the end result. We can also see them it outputs the results up here as well. So hit the up arrow key. This time we add prod. And when it does this, it's going to remove that folder. As you can see, it went bye-bye, and it will recreate it. All right, just finished. We can see our new dist folder. And where we go, before the vendor file was something like 2.1 megs. Now it is 313 kilobytes. This is a massive difference, obviously. The others also went down in file size as well. So sometimes, depending on the specifics of your app, you can, can cut out essentially about 90% of the file size when you're adding the production flag. So how does it do this? Well, there's a number of things that are occurring when you add that flag. It removes unwanted white space by minifying the files. It uglifies files by renaming functions and variable names. And then also is baked in AOT or ahead of time compilation, which removes the compilation process at runtime and instead performs compilation during the build process. Now, if you're unfamiliar with any of kind of what that means, especially with the AOT at the end, I, I'd suggest just Googling it and learning a little bit more about it. Um, so all of these things, though, they drastically reduce the file size of your app, thus decreasing load times, which is important. So also about AOT, you know, as of March 1st, when you specify the hyphen hyphen prod flag, as we did above, it will automatically include AOT. So previously you had to run ng build prod AOT. You no longer have to add the AOT. It's automatically baked within the production flag. Okay. So once you have your build, or in other words, you have this dist folder, this distrib distribution folder right here. Now, how do you actually get it onto a server? Well, you have several options. So if your app does not include or contain a backend of any sort, you can simply take the contents of this folder right here, and you can upload them to your site via FTP if you wish. The app will work if you're uploading it to the root public folder, such as you know, like mysite.com. But if it's within a subfolder such as mysite.com slash whatever, then you could specify the hyphen hyphen base hyphen href flag during the build process. And we add then hyphen hyphen base hyphen href and then a space and then the actual base URL depending on the folder structure. So um, by default, it's that. So then if you have a subfolder, um, or if it's on a subdomain or whatever, like that. So 
if you don't do that and it is on a subfolder, then you will run into issues uh, and the app will not load because it's looking for these files right here uh, in the wrong directory. So it won't load at all. Okay. Now outside of uploading the files via FTP, you can quickly deploy your app to GitHub pages using a package called Angular CLI GH pages or GitHub pages. Now the ability to deploy to GitHub pages was previously a part of the regular Angular command line interface, but it has been re recently removed from it and now it's in its own package. So let's go ahead and inst install that real quickly and angular hyphen cli hyphen gh pages all right so after it's installed go ahead and log into your github account create a new repository and we'll just name this one my cool proj no description public and create repository now the next step will fall this stuff right here in the project folder and that's to create this folder or turn it into a git repository so following those steps get init git add readme.md git commit first commit and then i'm going to copy and paste our remote add and then also copy and paste this command right here All right, great. So when you deploy to GitHub pages, you have to run your ng build command with the base href flag. So what that looks like is simply ng build add a production flag and then base href. And then we run https colon slash slash your GitHub username, mine's design course dot github dot io and then the repository name with a slash at the end. So the name is my cool proj. Make sure you add this slash right here, otherwise it will not work. All right, once it's done, then you can run ngh, which is how you invoke the command line interface tool that we just installed for deploying to GitHub pages. All right, and if it says successfully published as it does here, go ahead and visit that URL that we specified there in the base href flag. And there we go, your app should load and work as expected. Now, if it's blank or it says app loading, then hit control shift I, go to console, see what's happening. Chances are if it was working locally, but it's not working here, then you screwed up the URL of the base href flag up here. So you'll just have to rerun it and then run ngh again and push. All right, so that is the end of the free Angular 4 from scratch course, assuming you were following along with it. And of course, there's a lot more to Angular in terms of in-depth topics, but by now you should have a really strong foundation from which you can build upon in the future. So please check out my other courses. I'm Gary Simon, and I will see you.